I've gone through quite a few mice in my time. Heck, I even had one of those trackball mice in the early 2000s. Remember those things? Eventually I moved on to one of those dinky little $5 plastic laser mice and then moved on to a slightly less dinky but way smaller $20 wireless mouse all before I got to experience the joy of gaming-oriented mice. The first gaming mouse I ever owned was a Razer Naga, which, if you remember my Alienware laptop and the joy of owning it, got fried by the faulty USB ports. But from there, I moved on to the wireless options, so win-win. Eventually, I moved into the Corsair ecosystem of peripherals, and the direct replacement to my Naga Epic Chroma was the Corsair Scimitar Pro RGB which I've owned for the last few years and I've loved it. But there's something that the last three mice I've used all have in common. They're all virtually identical aside from a few minor adjustments. They're all palm grip mice. They all have 12 buttons on the side and a few more to boot. And they all have unicorn barf RGB mode. Sometimes you just gotta step outside of your comfort zone, you know? That's why, thanks to Corsair, I get to experience something new. The Night Sword RGB gaming mouse. Will it make me switch? I guess we'll find out. Huge thanks to Corsair and Elgato Gaming for sending this mouse my way. You can find all the links you need in the description below. So first things first, let's answer a question nobody asked. Why do I use this particular style of mouse? I don't even play MMOs or MOBAs. Well, I think it's just because I've used this one particular style of mouse for so long, I've gotten quite accustomed to it. Not only that, but I'm not a huge fan of keyboard macros. I'd much rather be able to control my character normally with my keyboard hand, do all of my special actions with my mouse hand. Being able to do such a wide variety of things with just one finger is incredible. Wait, pulling this thing out of the box, and the very first thing I notice is just how much glossy black plastic is on this thing. I must have pulled off close to a dozen pieces of plastic before I could get this thing plugged in and working. And there's nothing wrong with that. Keeping your mouse spotless in its packaging is just common sense. But there's a big reason why things like keyboards and PC cases have moved away from plastic construction, and that's because they collect fingerprints like a six-year-old in an Easter egg hunt, constantly grabbing them and always asking for more. I didn't even have it out of its cardboard cage for more than five minutes before it got all smudged up. What I do like, however, is that it's matte plastic where it counts, and the textured back not only provides the Night Sword with extra grip, but a little bit of extra ventilation as well. As you can see, my Scimitar Pro gets incredibly dirty, especially on days in the summer where it often breaks 90 degrees. Let's get all the specs out of the way first. At its core, every gaming mouse has a sensor strapped to a couple buttons. In the case of the Scimitar Pro, it uses a PMW3367 optical sensor with variable DPI scaling up to 16,000 DPI, whereas the Night Sword uses Corsair's new PMW3391 optical sensor, which bumps the DPI up to another 2,000 points to 18,000 DPI. What anyone would actually use that high of a DPI for is beyond me, although you could probably click out of that special browser tab and open up the book report you're supposed to be working on in record time to still be able to crack a fake smile to your mom who came to check on you. Jokes aside, both mice provide an incredible amount of customization for every kind of gamer with adjustability to single DPI increments. Both mice feature a nice monochromatic body with four zone RGB lighting to match your whole setup using Corsair's IQ software and a 1.8 meter braided cable which screams quality. The Night Sword features a total of 10 programmable buttons around the mouse with three by the built-in thumb rest two on the left mouse button, and two behind the scroll wheel. Although for whatever reason, Corsair's website depicts that it only has eight buttons. Now while 10 isn't any number to scoff at, the Scimitar Pro does just that with its 17 different program mobile buttons, with 70% of them being on the side, with an extra two stuck behind the scroll wheel as well. By default, the button closest to the scroll wheel lets you switch between up to three save memory profiles, while the button behind allows you to jump between different DPI settings with a single button press. And since they're reprogrammable, in my case, I've set those two buttons to page up and page down so I can switch the zeroing of my scope on the fly with no issues. A special feature that Corsair's implemented for the first time in any of their mice is an adjustable weight system located at the bottom of the Night Sword. You can have up to six weights total, and the mouse comes with three 4.5 gram weights and three 2.8 gram ones. What's even cooler about that is with IQ, you can see the position of the weights as you add them in real time, so you never have to pull the bottom off to check what you have installed. So whether you leave all of the weights out for speed, put all of the weights in for control, or any combination of the two, this feature provides just that much more customizability to the mouse. It's quite difficult trying to explain exactly how something like this feels when using it without getting way too far in detail to the point that I might as well make an audiobook about it, about how the 
Subtle curvature of the mouse caressed the inside of my palm, like a mother cradles a newborn baby's head, and the smooth texture provided a soft, comfortable experience that embraced against my fingertips. Okay, I'll stop. So instead, I'm just gonna throw up some footage on screen of my friend and I both using the mice for the first time with some basic details along the way. It was you. I know. <laughs> oh, that would have been awesome. I hate bad news so much. I was gonna say, it's a very compact map. I hate it. I actually hate it. <laughs> That's my gun, is the off. I love that gun. Do you? I, I'm invincible. Never mind. <laughs> oh, I'm um, liking the feel of this one so much better already. Really? Oh my god, it feels amazing. What? Alright. There you go. So you said overall you're liking that one more? Kinda, yeah. yeah. I, I really like it a lot more. That's cool. Oh, no one's home. No one's home. <laughs> Let's see, I literally thought he was just about to die. <laughs> oh, this is the one that's what? Actually, it's good. It's good if you're close enough personal, but... There you go. There you go. Oh, they, oh, there you go. Nice. I double tap too. I got him with a Megev and then I shot the other dude with the Deagle. I might get eight. I nice. Might win. Dude, you just got me two achievements. Oh my god. Uh, oh, that was close. That was, that was really good. Oh god, I suck. Terrible. Oh god, I'm so bad. God, I'm bad at the game. Wow, okay. <laughs> I was literally bottom of the leaderboard. Yay! Let's get that out of the way. Go back to the mouse I'm used to.
Got him. Dang it. So the final question is, am I switching? Well, probably not. It's not that the mouse isn't high quality, which it is, or doesn't have many features, which it does. But as I said earlier, it all comes down to user preference. I, for one, really enjoy the whole slew of buttons on the side of my scimitar. Having this many features handy without needing to look at my keyboard to hit a specific macro key is infinitely better in my opinion. So I think that's pretty much gonna do it for now. As I've said, just about all I can say. If you like what you saw, you know what to do. And if you wanna see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed because I love making these kinds of videos for you guys. And as always, have a good one.